Welcome back to another edition of Songs of the Ozarks, a project of the Ozark Studies Institute, an ongoing initiative of the Missouri State University Libraries. My name is Emily Flatness, and today's date is March 3rd, 2023. I'm here in the Ozarks room at Missouri State University with our special guest, Brian Pitts. Hello. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. Thank you. Um, I'm excited to get a little bit of representation for what genre do I you identify with the most? I'm a '80s pop music guy. That's a great genre. That's that's the, <laughs> that's the music I was listening to. I've always said that the most times your favorite music is the music you were listening to when you started driving. You got your driver's yes. license. You got in the car. You crank up the radio. Whatever songs those are. Those are the ones that stick with you for the rest of your life as being the best music ever, you know. That's a great point. Yeah. And, I, I've, and the more people I ask, they go, you know, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> no matter what year it was, you know. Is it true for you? Yeah, it is. <laughs> I mean, classic country and yeah. old-time music. That's what I'm still playing. Yeah. Um, well, what do you think about playing a song for us before we start? I'll play one. Our discussion. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to decide what to play. You said that I'm just gonna I'm just gonna pick one I like. This is by John Waite. Uh, he was a singer with the Babies back in the back in the '70s, and he's had a great solo career. And uh, the stuff I play, a lot of it I'll, I'll call my set list. Sometimes it's songs you won't admit you love. I've got some Carpenters. I've got some Culture Club. You know, Tears for Fears. Stuff like that that, you know, a guy like me and a, and a group of guys might go, that's not, I don't listen to that. But when you're by yourself in your car, you're singing at the top of your lungs. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the kind of stuff I play, so. My friends say 
Cut it a little short. <laughs> that was fantastic. Thanks. Um, yeah, what a classic song. You familiar with it? Yeah. yeah. I feel like that's been a song that everybody well, sings loud in the car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's awesome. Um, so you're from the Ozarks originally, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. Where'd you grow up? North of Bolivar, east of Humansville, uh, up on near Palm de Terre Lake, I live about two miles off the lake. Oh, I have, awesome. have a farm up there. Uh, my grandparents lived there. My my mother's parents lived right there on that farm. My dad's parents lived in Elkton, uh, which is a little closer to the lake, and they ran the country store up there. Had wow. cattle and horses and grew up riding horses. That's fantastic. So deep, deep roots in the Ozarks. Mm -hmm. Um, so did any of your ancestors or close relatives play music when you were growing up? Uh, my dad, my dad played music. My dad was a musician, played country music. He was kind of a, he had a band called the Ozark Drifters. Uh, I've seen pictures of him. I tried to find one. I couldn't find it. But uh, typical blue jeans, you know, rolled up to here and slick, slick back hair. And he was kind of the, he was the kid in the band. There was, uh, I think he if I remember right, he was 16, 17 years old, and the most of the guys in the band were 25, 30. So he got an education on <laughs> country music life back then. But I think he, if I remember right, they played uh, they played a gig where they were on the, uh, what was the show here in Springfield? Ozark's Jubilee. Ozark's Jubilee. Ozark's Jubilee. No kidding. And uh, one of his favorite stories to tell is, Humansville has a, a real nice big community building down there. It used to have big concerts in there. And Porter Wagner came through when he was not as big yet and dad had won like a uh, talent contest or something and he got to play with Porter that night so that's kind of that's his claim to fame oh my goodness um, my mom sang my mom sang a beautiful singer uh, didn't really play an instrument she encouraged us to get on the piano early really but she was a good singer my sister she's classically trained she she took the music we both we were both athletes and musicians and uh at a school like Humansville, you could do both. I mean, you could you could dive headfirst into both of them. Uh, you, nowadays, kids have to choose a lot. Like, well, if you're gonna mm -hmm. really if you're really gonna make it in baseball, you're gonna have to do it year round. You right. know, but back then you didn't. You did. I'd have uh, basketball practice after school, and after basketball practice, my music teacher was usually hanging around doing late like stuff for contest stuff like that. I mean, it was a great environment. You could. You could really uh, do about whatever you wanted to do. That's fantastic. It seems like a lot of um, kids nowadays will do, you know, homeschooling because they're missing that enrichment in both mm -hmm. um, activities. Um, so, did your dad play in bands all throughout your childhood? No, no, uh, and I'll add to this story later, but uh, he never did when I was a kid growing up. He really? wasn't playing in bands anymore. As I got a little bit older, I think I was out of high school. I mean, he, he always led the singing at church, and he, mm -hmm. both my dad and, and my wife Stephanie, her dad, both both sang the uh, song leaders in church, uh, and he'd play his guitar then. And they used to do a variety show up at Humansville. I don't know if it was the Booster Club or some some group would put on this variety show and he'd perform in those. It was kind of a hee-haw type oh, show. They'd, they'd have people come out doing skits and jokes and all that. And uh, he participated in that. Uh, but he's, he's the first guy, and my sister, uh, Kim, uh, taught me a little bit about guitar, but I never really uh, didn't take to that. I didn't stick to my piano lessons like my sister did. Um, I ended up playing saxophone and band and then I was a drummer I took up drumming naturally that it didn't seem hard for me like the just drumming I bang on my steering wheel and <laughs> it was something that I took up and I my first band experience out of school there was a rock band called Renegade and I started out as the drummer and really I was doing a lot of vocals back there so eventually they moved me out front and we brought another drummer in so then I had to learn about what to do with my hands while I sing. So I grabbed a guitar, and the first the first time I started doing it, I, I had Jeff, my guitar player, Jeff Carlson, uh, 
I said, show me enough just to get through the intro. Because a lot of those old 80s rock songs, like my Poison, Every Rose Has Its Thorn, they always had this acoustic guitar intro. Yeah. And then, it, then it'd go full force into the song. So if I could just learn the intro, and then once the song started, I could just turn down and sing, and I could strum, but nobody knew I was not really playing. So. Right. <laughs> That's a good trick. <laughs> Fake it till you make it. Right? Yeah. Um, so, what kind of... How did you, I guess, transition into really identifying as a musician, I guess is my question, instead of someone who just... Um... High school, I kind of, I was I was known as as both. I was okay. a basketball player and a baseball player, uh, and I you know I, I'll credit my teacher at Humansville, Rosemary Fraking. She did more with fewer students. I think our our school probably didn't have. I know it was less than two hundred. Probably I don't know one hundred seventy five students. You know, In the each whole each class had you know I'm talking fresh freshman to senior. Wow. Usually had around thirty. Like I think we had 35 or six, and there was a few bigger, a few smaller, but mm -hmm. that was the size of our high school. So we're talking less than 200 people, students total, and we'd have 60 in marching band. Wow. So participation level was really high. Yeah. And we weren't slouches. I mean, we were class one, we were a small school, but we were winning trophies. I mean, she was making, uh, she turned a bunch of kids into a pretty good marching band. You know, and she, she spent tons of time, of course, during the day, and then come contest time, you know, she'd be at the school till eight or nine o'clock doing individual sessions with people to work on their saxophone quartet or their mixed eight combo or mm -hmm. the quartet or your vocal solos, all that stuff. So, uh, credit to her. I had a good, I had good, I had a good basketball coach and I had a good music teacher in school. I never got very smart, but I could I could play sports <laughs> and play and sing. So the other teachers were good too. Right. Yeah. So anyway, so I got out of college, and I, you know, my sister took the route of music, and she went to SBU and oh, awesome. got her degree in that. And she's like I said, she's classical. She's sang in Germany and other places. Uh, I went to play basketball in college, so I played for a couple of years, and then was actually working selling cars and. Uh, there was this long-haired kid in the back washing cars, and he goes, uh, yeah, me, me and my friend got a band, and I said, well, I play a little. And they go, what do you play? I said, I'm a drummer. Well, we need a drummer. So no we went and practiced, and, and uh, pretty soon we were entering a battle of the bands, and we won it, and uh, entered another one and got beat. But pretty soon we're gigging. Like, we, we bring in another guitar player, and, and uh, pretty soon we've got a booking agency booking us. At first, just out in Kansas or Iowa, Nebraska, Kansas City, Jeff City, and around here a little bit. And then uh, pretty soon we bring this other drummer in and I start doing more lead vocals. Mm -hmm. And we start getting pretty soon we're going to Georgia to play and wow. Seattle, Washington to play. And we're just, I mean, I was, the, well, me and, me and Bob Kidd, it was me and Bob Kidd, Corbin Cornell, Jeff Carlson, and the new drummer we brought in was Brian Sullinger. He went by Scott because I was already Brian. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't seen Scott forever. I think the last time our bus broke down at, after our last gig, the band broke up. I never saw Scott again. Really? <laughs> <laughs> when was that that you guys broke that up? That was 1990. Really? Yeah. Were, did you guys mostly play cover tunes or original material? That band actually had, we did, we had about 13 original songs. Really? And uh, most of them were pretty good. There was a few stinkers in there that we tried to <laughs> tried to make good. But uh, the thing is, we we honed a lot of them while we were traveling. Right. And we ended up breaking up before we really got a good recording of most of them. Like we had we had one kind of our signature song. We had a pretty good recording of that, and we had some demo tapes of some other stuff and you know really would have liked to have gotten a good recording of all of those songs yeah and now we can't really remember them what they really? were <laughs> I mean, oh, we could, we could probably get through them but jeff jeff still plays and he's he lives in las vegas now and he's got a oh, solo awesome. career and 
Uh, Corbin lives in Florida. Bob Kitt lives out in, uh, where does he live? Mountain View. And like I said, I don't know where Scott's at. Yeah. He's gone. <laughs> but that was, uh, that was, and that was really over a two year period. We, That's that we fantastic. Did all that stuff. We did a lot. We did a lot for us. Not that great a band. I mean, we were really like we were okay. What they, do you think made you guys so special that all these people wanted to book you? I don't know. I mean, we my bass player Bob was pretty good about sending out promo packs. Mm. He, he made us a little deal that had pit. We had some pictures made. We had a set list. We had our equipment list. We had a cassette we'd send out. And uh, you know, sometimes you just get lucky. We. One thing we found out when we were out on the road was that there's a lot of good musicians out there, yeah. and they're not all playing. You yeah. know, I, I see it now. You know, uh, I book a lot of solo gigs, and I'm in a few bands, but I all the time run across people that are like, "Man, he's good," you know, and he's just showing up at an open mic night, just tearing it up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my other kind of question about um, when you were growing up. Was there any um, folks in your family or anything that wanted you to go a different route than the rock stuff? My, my wife's dad wasn't a big fan of it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, I think they were a little nervous about that. She, right. She made that point a few times. Oh I'd, my goodness, that's hilarious. I'd grown the hair out a little bit and... Because she traveled with us. I've been married 36 years. That's fantastic. And uh, so she, Stephanie traveled along with us, and she'd make sure our hair was properly poofed up. She, had, <laughs> right? she was a cosmetologist, so she, she made sure our hair was poofed up big, and she ran our little makeshift light show. No kidding. Yeah. And, uh, and then had to hang around with us on an old school bus that we converted into a taking a bunch of seats out and put a wall in so we could load the equipment in the back and then we could ride in the front. That's awesome. And it looked exactly like it. We didn't even paint it. It was still Really? <laughs> <laughs> we did put Renegade across the front. So that was the band name. It was like the aesthetic. Yeah. Was the school bus. Um, how was your reception playing in all those different states versus playing here in the Ozarks? Was it different, would you say? A lot of times when you're playing in your hometown, people don't really think think that much of you yeah but you show up and you show up in a town and they go oh they're from Missouri they must be really good and, and you, you and they they really think you're awesome you know yeah <laughs> I think a lot of it uh, I think that's true for a lot of things yeah you know because you know a band will come into town here that we're not familiar with. well let's go see them mm -hmm. I don't know who they are but if it's someone I know it's like nah. right you know? I will say though that Springfield uh, I don't know if it was it was I don't remember it being bad back then but today uh, Springfield music people really support each other mm. um, you know if, if I've got to, and I've made a lot of friends in this scene and uh, you know if, if Justin Larkin's got a show across town I'll sure try to go see him we've traveled to go see him that's one thing about playing more I don't get to see my friends play as much yeah uh, but uh, if someone else has got a first concert that they're getting ready to go play you know I'll try to support them and because I've got you know the, the opportunities that I've been given recently are strictly because of somebody else think that I could do it or giving me a shot or yeah you know um, these uh, these open mic deals that uh, are getting so popular around town now there's so many of them that if friend of mine, Rory Joyce, he passed away, mm -hmm. but uh, when I just, because I didn't play for, tw I didn't play for 30 years, I didn't play from 1990 no to 2020, and uh, it was kind of, everybody says, well, during the pandemic, well, kind of, you know, we had, uh, I remember Justin Larkin, we had him over for a 4th of July party, and he played, and people would all the time say, don't you play, didn't you play, and I'm like, yeah, well, how come you don't, I, don't, I just don't, you know. I've done it. I'm not probably not going to do it anymore. But the more people said that, I'm like, well, why don't I? You know? Yeah. So I got, took my, you know, four chords and started trying to play a little more. And I never really had guitar lessons. I'm not going to say I'm self-taught because I don't know enough to even teach myself. But I've had, 
you know, a lot of people that have, uh, you know, Roy for one, uh, Paul Tomlinson is a, he's a bandmate of mine that's a superior guitar player mm -hmm. and a great guy. Uh, and uh, Justin Lark and Craig Amison are my friend and yours. Uh, just encouragement from them. They're uh, people that will show me. You know, one guy will say, "Why don't you try this?" And I'll learn a little trick from him. And somebody else will. So, and pretty soon, I'm playing songs I never could play before, just because he showed me one chord shape. It opens up all these different songs that I couldn't do, and now I sound like I can play guitar. You know, and somebody <laughs> else will show me something else, and it's kind of the same thing. So just kind of keep your ears open and learn from people. Yeah, definitely. Um, what kept you from playing shows and music in that 30-year well, period? Uh, the end of Renegade mm -hmm. was after not really a disastrous tour. It was a mess. We'd, we'd gone up through, we started in Billings, Montana. Uh, it was our first gig. So we had to go eight hours or whatever it was to our first gig. Mm -hmm. And then we were over in, we were supposed to have a, a gig in Spokane, Winthrop, Washington, which is just outside of Spokane. And it, for some reason, was a missed booking or something. And they said, well, we're actually closed this week. So we had, we had a week of dead time out in the West Coast. And then found a place to play that weekend and came back and missed it. I've got stories. We probably don't have time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Wrong turns. Time. Wrong turns in the middle of the night trying to get from <gasps> Portland, Oregon to Boise, Idaho. Waking up in the morning with Jeff Carlson, my guitar player, at the wheel. Uh, and we're in Northern California. Oh, my goodness. Because we're looking at the map and saying, I don't recognize any of these towns. And we finally see a town that's like, we're, we're going from here to here and we're actually down here. <laughs> so we almost, we, we made it to Boise eight o'clock and we're supposed to be on stage at nine. We tried to cancel, they said no. So we just, we set up and played in the clothes we traveled in. And it was actually wow. a pretty good show. <laughs> the, the, the big crap, because you know, Monday's a big night. We're like, no, it's not. I said, yes, it is. And it For was. some reason it was. In what? Boise, Idaho, Monday night. They were all came to check out the new band. So that was, Anyway, on the way back home, the bus breaks down, made it all the way to Grandview. So we made it to Kansas City, and my sister lived less than five miles from where the bus broke down. So I saw, I think Scott's parents come up and got him. Everybody came up and went back home, and uh, we said, let's just take a break. And then Stephanie finds out that she's pregnant, and so I said, I guess I'm done. Yeah. So cut the hair off. Had to cut my hair about three times. To, my sales manager said, uh, you need to cut that. I said, okay. I came back, he goes, a little more. Are came you back serious? and I cut it in. So finally, finally I just got a real haircut. <laughs> and so then we just raised, you know, raised family yeah. for 30 years. My, my son's 31, my daughter's 24, Jordan and Brianna. And uh, so it was just me and Steph around the house. And she always said, uh, I gotta give her credit because she said, you're not ever doing that again. Yeah. No more band stuff done it and I said well I'm just gonna go to this open mic I'm just gonna play a few songs because that's fine well then at open mic I meet someone that says hey uh, we're doing an Eagles tribute band City Girls you want to you want to sing in that yeah so I said yes and so it's, we just play a few shows a year it's no big deal oh, so but I, I'm in that band with Paul Tomlinson he's he's uh He's kind of the front man, plays a lot of lead guitar. It's a great group of people. Uh, but anyway, Paul plays in a lot of different deals too. Paul's got a band called Innuendo, and he had joined up with some guys out of Kansas City called the M80s, and they had started a yacht rock band. Are you familiar with yacht rock, what mm -hmm. that is? So it's 70s radio rock. It's, oh, sweet. It's Baby Come Back. It's, you know, it's all that sweet, sweet good music. You know? Yeah. And uh, they played a show in Springfield. So Paul has me get up and sing one, and so that was fun. And I don't know, it was a little while later, he, he texts me and he goes, hey, these guys are wanting to know if you'd be interested in doing a, a Hall & Oates tribute band. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so I said yes to that too. And then while you're at it, you might as well join Yachtly Groove, which is the Yacht Rock band, because right. it's all the same guys. We just, for, for the Yacht Rock set, we, we, we got captain's hats and sparkly shirts and the oh whole, my gosh. everybody's got the exact same costume on. That's and it's just a ton of fun and the music's great. People love it. Uh, so I, I don't play guitar in that because Paul and Eric Martin are great guitar players already. Kurt Whitaker's a bass player. Ed's a drummer. 
so I play some percussion and I've got a keyboard up there because I can play enough keyboard to kind of kind of like I used to do guitar get through an intro <laughs> <laughs> I'm working on that though I'm trying I'm still I'm trying to grow in my keyboards a little bit so uh, so anyway awesome. I'm doing the Yachtly Groove I'm doing the, the Hall & Oates tribute which I love because Hall & Oates has got tons I'll, I may do a Hall & Oates song here in a minute it'll that's be a, awesome. it'll be an acoustic version of right. it right that's super fun stuff, and uh, so I get to play with my friend Paul. Another deal I've got is uh, a duo that Craig and I, Craig Amison, uh, it's called Openly Gray, Best and it's a, it's a lot as well. We're both gray-haired, right. and uh, but we do a lot of old 70s and 80s stuff too, and he's a great guitar player and keyboard player, Yeah. and we, for some reason, our voices, you know, when we sing harmonies together, people say, you guys sound like brothers, you know, so we, our voices kind of fit. And we both enjoy the same music. Like if he'll say, we ought to try this song. And I'll go, yeah. Or I'll suggest when he goes, oh, yeah. So we're on the same page as far right. as what we like. So that's that's the whole thing for me. Everything I'm doing right now is stuff that I genuinely love singing and playing. It's fantastic. Um, would you say there's much rock um, or old pop representation in Springfield or the surrounding area? There's there's a lot of good rock bands. Really? Funny thing is a lot of them are closer to my age. Like there's not a ton of young I'll, I'll take that back. There there are. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I was introduced to a lot of the younger music crowd at the cellar. Oh, okay. It's closed now. Uh, Springfield Brewing Company's cellar and there was a lot they had an, another open mic situation where all these people come in and just jump up on stage and, and play and you're like blown away by some of them and and we were able to get up and Justin Larkin hosted that deal and I would usually play drums a lot for that because I can jam along drums I'm not a good enough guitar player to get up and just play with someone like Justin can or Paul but uh, but I can do backing vocals and play drums mm -hmm. and so we'd have some fantastic uh, collaborations that would just pop up on a Sunday night We'd have people like Molly Healy would show up, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, I, I hate starting to name names because I inevitably my brain stops remembering names. Oh, but, uh, you know, that was uh, Mike Evans managed the cellar, and he was a great, he's a, he's a great food guy managing the operation, uh, but he's also a great singer and really? guitar player. And we, we had some really good collaborations. That's fantastic. Uh, so anyway, back to the question with young bands. Mm -hmm. uh, they're out there. There's a, a James River Three Way. There's uh, the Kursk. And mm -hmm. again, I'm going to name. I won't name some that I should name. But there's a lot of good young talent. I'm kind of that old guy though. That's like, you know, some of it's my style. Some of it's not. Yeah. Now I'm that guy. <laughs> 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 that I used to look at and go, "You're too old." <laughs> So. It's interesting how that's universal in every yeah. genre. Yeah. Is um, even young folks would be like, hmm. Yeah. That's not as good as the old stuff. Yeah. But uh, but there's no denying that they're they're great musicians. Right. Definitely. You know, some of the more established bands, you know, Red Light Runner is a great, they're a great party band. Could play that's a lot of good, and they play a lot of retro music, though. Really? They really do. Like some some of their most fun, they'll uh, they'll, they'll pull out songs kind, kind of the same mentality that I have. I'll start playing a song and they're like, "Is that is that the Carpenters he's playing?" It is. You know, I'm pretty sitting there singing along. You know, they they do an old Paul Simon song called uh, "If You'll Be My Bodyguard, I Will Be Your Long Lost Pal," oh, and it's a, that's a you know that song. song. Yeah. And pretty soon they got a conga line going around the bar. You know, right. people dancing. You know. Uh, so there's a, there's a lot of good music. Springfield, and everywhere I go, people say, oh, we've heard about Springfield. Really? You know, there's a lot of good music in Springfield. You know, we've got some, the Dirty Saints. There's a good rock band. They do really? 80s. They've got a phenomenal singer. Uh, Damsel has a phenomenal singer. There is a lot of these guys, a lot of these bands are kind of interwoven. Like there'll be a guy that's in this band that's also in this one, and he's got a different bass player or a different singer. And, you know, but uh, someone said one time, can't remember exactly how it went, but Humansville's got, or uh, Springfield's got 20 bands and 18 musicians. <laughs> you know, <it's> like, <laughs> right. Like, they're, all, they're, all, they're all in each other's bands. 
that that math didn't work. But anyway, that, you get the story. I do. That's a lot of fantastic. musicians are playing the same bands. <laughs> Um, well, I don't think I have any more questions. Do you have anything else you feel would be pertinent? I can't believe we filled this much time. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could go on and on about uh, band stories and stuff, but mainly uh, the, uh, the appreciation I have for my friends that have, you know, kind of given me opportunities to do stuff that I really enjoy doing. Yeah. I always, I'd, I'd sit at home and man, I wish I could, because I've always been a singer. It's a little hard to tell at noon on a weekday, I'm not oh, quite dialed true. in, but uh, I've <laughs> always loved singing and I've always said, man, if I could just be in a band that would play, because I've, I've loved karaoke, because I, I could go sing songs that I'm not able to play, and all yeah. of a sudden I'm, I'm in bands that play those songs, and it's just fantastic. It so is So it's a good time. That's about all I got, though. I awesome. hope I haven't left anything out. See, I covered my music teacher, covered my friends. My old bandmates, my new bandmates, my wife. Yeah. Um, I think I covered it. All right, what should I play? I've been going through an awkward situation with my hair. I'm kind of trying to grow it back out again because these cover band, this Hall and Oates thing, you know, we're trying to look like Hall and Oates. And they said, we well, need to get you a wig. I'm like, can I, can I just try? Can maybe give me a few months, maybe right? we can back grow it out. <laughs> So I'll get a wig if I have to. Right. They said, the, the guys that we, that me and Paul are with, they've been, they're the top cover band in Kansas City for the past really? 15 years. And so. And now they, they know, live in Springfield? No, they live in Kansas City still. Me no and Paul, kidding. we, we practice, we just practice our, I get together with Paul sometimes because we're the two yeah. front guys mainly. So we work out vocal stuff and, and, uh, but we run backing tracks behind, because a lot of times there'll be there'll be a sax part that if it's not there, the song just don't sound right. Yeah. You know? And but you don't want to bring in a sax player into the band to play one song, three part. You know, yeah. some same with you know some keyboard stuff that's more intricate than what I can play. Like we could play the songs, and the band those guys are great instrumentalists. But there's pieces and parts that if the song don't have it, if you're doing a tribute band. Those pieces need to be there. And so the drummer in that sort of a situation has got a lot more on his plate because he's got, he's got the click track in his ear. He's got to make sure that we're where we're supposed to be in the song at the right time for that deedly, deedly, dee, whatever it is that comes in, we've got to be there at that point. Right. And so uh, he's got to be creative and precise wow. <laughs> to keep us on track. So... <laughs> Yeah, you know, that's that's stuff that's new too. I never I never dealt with click tracks and stuff right. like that before. Yeah, that's um, technology has made everything so much easier for musicians. It's fantastic. You ready for me to try one? Yeah. This is a Hall and Oates tune. Uh, it's called "Say It Isn't So." The last time I asked you, I really got a lame excuse. I know that you lied. Wicked things can happen. I see them going down in war. But if you play in a quiet game, it fights it even more. Tell me what you want, and I'll do it for you, baby. Right now, who propped you up when you were stuck? Low motivation had you on the ground. I know your first reaction is right away, hide away, goodbye. But if there's a doubt, baby, I can work out a thousand reasons why you've got to say it isn't so. Say it isn't Oh, no, no. 
like to be the strangers at the party to people in a shell. You like to move with the best of them, you know you, you move so well. You need no one to lean on, I know, over oh, there's an open door. But if you play in a quiet game, find city. have heard it and didn't recognize it really <clears throat> maybe i don't know maybe. i enjoyed Anyways, it thanks. yeah thanks so much yeah. it's been really great